All right, we are going to solve by substitution. Solving by substitution is one of three ways we can solve a system of equations. We can solve by graphing, we can solve by substitution, and the last method is elimination. When we solve by substitution, the biggest thing we're looking for is we need one variable by itself. Now, what does it mean to have one variable by itself? What you're looking for is you're either looking for a y equals, an x equals, or a coefficient of 1. More likely than not, when we solve by substitution, we're going to have an equation that's already isolated. That variable is already isolated, but sometimes we won't, and we can still use substitution as a method for solving the system. So looking at our example, which coefficient, or excuse me, which variable has a coefficient of 1? You should notice that x does. Okay, there's an understood one. That is going to be the equation that we're going to isolate. Okay. So we're going to solve for x. Okay. We're solving for that variable who has a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to rewrite that equation, x plus 6y equals 18. If I want to solve for x, what would be my first decision, or what is my only decision? It should be that we subtract 6y from both sides of the equation. So what that does is it eliminates the y's over here, and I should get x equals a negative 6y plus 18. I have solved for x. I have isolated one variable. Now, since I solved for x, my next step is to look for something to substitute. So I'm going to identify the variable in the other equation to substitute. So my other equation is 2x minus 3y equals a negative 24. Again, previously stated, we solved for x, so that means I'm going to substitute in for the variable of x. So let's rewrite that equation with that substitution in it. So that's going to be step number four. We're going to rewrite our equation. So we have two, and I have to substitute something in for x, minus 3y equals a negative 24. Now again, we identified the variable we're substituting for because we got x equal to something. Both of those x's are the same, so I get to substitute, I get to change what that x looks like in my problem. So I'm going to substitute into negative 6y plus 18. Now 
Now I have two of the same variable in my problem, I can solve my equation. So my next step is going to be to solve for y. I'm going to eliminate step six here so we have some room. So to solve for y, what should be our first step? Our first step should be to distribute. So we're going to get a negative 12y plus 36 minus 3y is equal to a negative 24. Then what am I allowed to do? I'm allowed to combine like terms. So I'm going to get a negative 15y plus 36 is equal to a negative 24. I'm trying to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract 36. So I'm using that additive property of equality there. So that's going to cancel this constant out, and I'm going to get a negative 15y is equal to a negative 60. I'll scroll this up to the center of the screen. So our last step should be to divide. I'm going to divide by a negative 15. I'm going to divide by negative 15. So that's going to give me y is equal to a negative divided by a negative is a positive 4. Now I cannot stop there. When I solve a system of equations, my solution has to be an ordered pair. So if I have a y value, how could I find my x? I'm going to have to substitute again. So I'm going to substitute my y value to solve for x. Now you can substitute it in any of the equations that were given to you. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that you can. It's just a preference. So the first one we can substitute is 2x minus 3. And in that y spot, we're going to want to put that 4. All right, so if I simplify this, I'm going to get 2x minus 12 is equal to a negative 24. So 2x is equal to a negative 12. So x equals a negative 6. So that's one equation you could substitute it in for. Another equation you could substitute it in for is x plus 6, we'll substitute in for y, equals 18. I'm going to substitute that 4 in. So I'm going to get x plus 24 is equal to 18. And when I subtract, I still get x equals to a negative 6. So I can substitute it into either of my original equations. I still get the same x value back. The last equation that you could substitute for to find x is that x equals a negative 6y plus 18. So we would say a negative 6 times 4 which earlier we know we got, that's a negative 24 plus 18. So that is also a negative 6. So I just demonstrated to you that it does not matter where you substitute your value into. Either equation is going to produce the same x value. Now, your final answer for a system should always be written as an ordered pair. So we're going to write the final solution 
as an ordered pair. Now remember your ordered pair is x comma y, so don't get confused in what you solved for first. Your answer is always x comma y, so this is going to be negative 6, 4. That is the solution to our system of equations. Now let's look at one more example. So let's flip the page to the next page. Let's look at example one. Now in example one, we can substitute already. I told you you need a variable by itself, or you need a variable that has a coefficient of one. Well, this variable is totally by itself. What that tells me is I can take this 6x minus 11, and I can substitute it in for the other y. That's the variable that I get to substitute it in for. So let's do that. We're going to say a negative 2x minus 3 equals a negative 7. Now I left a gap in my parentheses because these two y's are the same. I get to substitute. Just like before, we're going to distribute. I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to subtract 33. And I'm going to divide and get 2. Now this time you'll notice we found our x value first. That's totally fine. I need to go back and solve for y. So I'm going to go back to my original equation here. I'm going to say y equals 6 times 2 minus 11. So what is 12 minus 11? That's 1. But we write our answer as what? An ordered pair. And that is how we solve systems of equations by substitution.